Welcome ladies and gents to another Detecting with Dale. This week's something slightly different. I'm having two weeks off detecting in the field. So I've set up the detector in the studio. Um, I'm going to be showing you, not that you'll see them very well, but I'm going to be showing you a range of finds from Celtic to Georgian, Victorian, including Roman and um, medieval. And we're going to be testing the standard coil tones on the settings I use, which I'll show you right at the end. And you're also going to be able to see, as you can see already, the screen will show you the VDI numbers on the MindLab Manticore and also the 2D screen. So hopefully this is going to be uh, beneficial to a lot of people all around the world. Um, these finds are from the UK. Um, and if you watch my videos, um, you may have seen some of them before. If not, please uh, give my videos a, a watch. Perhaps subscribe, give the videos a like, all helps the channel. So what we're going to start with, I think I'm going to go in order of age, hopefully. Um, we're going to start with a Celtic woad grinder. Now this Celtic woad grinder is first century. Um, so it's a good 2,000 years old. It's made of bronze. And I'm just going to show each artifact and coin on the full frontal side. So you've got the, the, the full surface area on the coil and then the tone it makes with the thinner e edge so that if it's ever laying on edge in the ground you know what the tone and what kind of signal is. I know it's an air test but it's as good as we can do um, to get everything we need out of this video so this is bronze full frontal so on my tones uh, on my settings I would say that's a medium lower tone. Medium lower tone on edge. As you can hear, more of an iffy signal. You'd still dig it every day, but more of an iffy signal. So nine times out of 10, the artifacts aren't laying flat on the ground. So your signals are gonna be, um, trained to your ear so you're going to know to dig certain things when they're on edge right so let's go to the roman let's start with the brooches i've got a broken fibula broken roman fibula brooch it's got a bit of the spring left in it that's a nice medium tone lovely medium tone you dig that all day long on edge Not too much different, nice medium tone. Right, next one is like a silver washed bronze fibula brooch, full one. That's probably a small medium size, small to medium. Nice, deeper tone. That's, be that's between medium tone and deep tone that, and then on edge. Same tone, but a bit more iffy. And then we've got a first century, um, I think it's bronze, but it might be copper alloy. I think it might be copper alloy, this. This has still got spring left in it as well, but this is what they call a Merc Thistle type brooch. So this is probably getting towards Celtic as well, but it's classed as Roman. Medium high tone, would you agree? Medium high tone on edge. Probably more towards the medium tone, but I'd say it's, it's just a bit over medium tone in, in my ear. Right, next up, we've got some Roman coins. So we've got a medium sized Roman coin. This is probably a Constantine. It's nearly complete. It's got a few chewed edges on it. Bronze. Now that is definitely below medium tone. That's getting sort of medium, deeper tone, that is. And on edge. Yeah, I mean, you, you dig it all day long, but on the manticore, believe me, a lot of the nice 
coins and artifacts will come in at a lower tone. So don't just listen out for those high pitched tones. You, you'll get your milled coins, which I'll show you in a minute, come in at a really high pitched overload type of tone. But a lot of your older stuff is gonna come in at a lower medium tone. Right, we'll go for a smaller Roman coin and see what that sounds like compared to the medium. So let's just remind ourselves the medium. Small. That is really tiny one. So that is a deep tone, isn't it? It's not as deep as they go, but that is a deep tone and on edge. You gotta know what you you listen out for, because on edge you might not dig that. Some people might not dig that. But these lovely little Roman tiny little bronze coins do give you a good signal if they're laying flat and they're in the ground. They really do latch, the manacle latches on. Right, lastly on the Roman section, we've got um, what I think is like a bronze. I don't think it's a steel yard weight, but it's got some, it's got some iron bits on it. So whether it was like a little toy vessel for kids at, at one point, um, and it's got the handle broken off it and whatever, I don't know. It's either a steel yard weight or, or some kind of bronze artifact. <laughs> now the reason I think it's not a bro uh, steel yard weight is because it's bronze, that tone. <laughs> nice high pitch, that's bronze tone. Lead would be uh, a bit deeper than that, I think. You can hear the iron grunting away. I told you there was iron on this and you can hear it. Uh, Manticore's telling you that there is iron in it, but that is a beautiful signal. Right, let's move up, up in the period. Uh, we'll go to the medieval now. Um, now, everyone wants to know what hammered coins sound like. I've got three here. I've got a half cut, I've got a small penny, and I've got a slightly larger penny. So uh, we'll start with the larger penny. I'd call that just below medium tone for a medieval penny on edge. Iffy signal. You've got to remember these hammered coins, a lot of the time they're laying on edge and there's not a lot for that detector to hit on that thin, lit, that thin edge. So you've got to listen out for your hammered coins. Slightly smaller bent up um, hammered coin here. Slightly deeper tone. I'd say that's a deeper tone, but a more crisp tone. And on edge. Slightly iffier tone, as you'd expect. Hope you're keeping an eye on the VDI numbers and the, and the 2D screen while I'm doing this. And then we've got a half cut. I ain't got a quarter cut here, but a half cut. We often find half cuts. Um, let's see what this sounds like. It's probably going to be deeper again. Slightly iffy, and that is the that is the full surface area of the coin, but it's got a slight bend in it. So uh, let's turn it over a minute. There you go. Fairly deep tone. And then on edge. Slightly struggling a bit, but you still dig it all the time. Um, medieval still, we've got a little mount here. It's like a silver wash mount with two rivets on it, which are which are iron. So hopefully we can hear the iron as well, but this is probably copper alloy with a silver wash. Really deep tone. Like I say, a lot of the nice older stuff comes in at a deeper tone, medium to deep. And look at the numbers. Four to five on the manacle. That's obviously picking up them iron rivets as well. So it's obscuring the, uh, the tone a little bit and the signal. 
Um, medieval, we've got a medieval spindle wall, decorated one. This is quite a nice one. Medieval. So that's a nice high pitch. On the settings I've got, which like I say, I'll show you at the end of the video, that is a nice high pitch for spindle wall. On edge, it drops about three tones, look. So you are picking up different tones for the way that lays in the ground. Right, um, oh, I forgot this uh, bit of lead. This might be Roman, might be Georgian, you never know, but um, it was found with the Roman stuff. So it's about 15 mil thick, about the size of a Roman medium-sized coin. Just. Uh, testing that lead more or less the same as that spindle wall and that was on edge as well so very similar to the spindle wall right moving through the period we've got a medieval book clasp um, slightly bent but it's probably copper alloy um, I'd say certainly medieval approaching the Tudor period, but let's uh, let's test this uh, little artifact. Medium deep tone, lovely tone that is. I mean, nice and stable at thirty one, thirty two as well on the VDI. I'm not keeping an eye on the VDI, sorry, but um, now and again I always glance over it. And on edge. Fairly solid signal all the way round, really. So you're not missing that, medieval. Next, we're going to go to Georgian period. Um, Georgian copper coins. Everyone knows that these blast your ears off. Um, let's see what one of them... Let's, let's do both of them. So, Georgian copper pennies will, or half pennies, will give you some of the higher tones on, on the manticore. Try the other one. Mill coins in general from the Georgian period, maybe the Victorian period even, um, give you a really, really good signal. And on edge, you're not missing that. So they're copper. Let's do the silver ones. Silver shilling. All day long. Nice high pitch. On edge. Again, all day long you're just not gonna you're not gonna miss it uh, go to a sixpence this is a Queen Victoria sixpence a couple of tones less than the shilling but still quite a high pitch and on edge Leaping and blopping a little bit, but again, nice signal on that. We've got a little Georgian silver button here. This is a tiny little thing. This is probably the size of a Saxon skeet, so I'm not saying it would sound the same, but I would imagine that this would come up similar to the small sort of silver coins you might find, whatever period it might be. Nice high pitch again. Not as high as the shilling. This is on edge. Splattering and splattering, but it is still coming up with a decent signal. We've got a little uh, pewter decorative tomback button from the 1700s here. Tiny little thing. See it on the tip of my finger there. Some people might walk over that and not, not dig it because of the, t the tone's too deep. But I, I class that as a very, very solid, deeper tone signal. And I've, like I say, I find a lot of nice things in the deeper regions of the tones. And the good thing about the manticore is it doesn't miss the little things. Let's 
that was on edge. So it's sort of a, a deeper tone, it's sort of like below, it's below the halfway mark of medium to deep tone. Next, we have just the humble thimble. That's probably Victorian or Georgian as a copper thimble. So any which way, you're gonna hit quite a good surface area on this. So I don't think it's gonna matter on the, on the tone. I think it's just gonna stay the same. So that's a couple of tones above medium, I'd say. That's a really solid signal. And uh, yeah, you'll dig it all day long. Um, a little Victorian stroke Georgian furniture fitting. I thought that was a strap um, end uh, medieval when I first dug it. You'll see on the video if you ever watch it, um, the full length video, but this is sort of a cap copper alloy. Medium to high pitched on there and on the side. Terrific signal still. We've got a Tudor open work button. This is uh, Copper Allo again. Because of the size, I think that's why you're getting a deeper tone. You're getting a medium deeper tone. Lovely tone though, sort of pushing to that medium scale, but probably in the deeper region. We've got two fragments of Georgian shoe buckle. Deeper tone. And the other one. So you're looking at medium deep tone on that. Um, we've got a Charles the First. This is from the 1600s. This is a copper um, farthing from Charles the First, like a hammered coin really, but in a copper version. And I think this one's a forgery, so let's just see what it sounds like. Quite a deep tone on the side. When I say deep, it's sort of uh, below the sort of medium deep halfway mark, it's just below that. And then we go to World War One, World War Two. We've got a cap badge again, copper alloy again. You're expecting a good signal from this. One of the higher pitches you'll get, unless you hit a can, a tin can, which is overloading the, the signal. That's probably one of the higher pitches. Which is a lovely signal. So um, you dig that all day long. You'll now and again get one of these, but a lot of the time you might get some uh, 303 bullets. <laughs> right, lastly, we've got gold wedding band. This is my own. Um, I'm just gonna do it. Um, that way and that way, so you can hear what uh, 18 karat gold ring sounds like, especially if you're on the beach. Um, it'll probably sound a lot different to what you're now about to experience because of the sand and the aerated sand and the water and all that kind of stuff. But let's see what this sounds like. I think it's gonna ping up quite well. Now that's actually deeper than what I thought. You're looking at medium deeper tone on that. I was expecting it to be right up there on the scale. But obviously with my settings, that's what it sounds like. That's what I'm used to. And on the side. Medium deeper tone again. So no problem with that whatsoever. So that is my little box or my little tub of goodies. Hopefully you've uh, got some information from the tones, um, the VDI numbers and the 2D screen that was on the video. Uh, I'm now gonna show you the, the settings I use. Really simple settings, but I would recommend them because they find me lots of stuff, honestly. Um, you can have the fanciest settings you want, but these do work. And they work on most arable, and pasture um, ground. So I'm not saying anything about the beach because I'll probably change it for the beach, but this these settings are pretty decent for all round sort of UK soil. Um, 
whether it's pasture or arable. So let's let's show you the settings. Right. So first thing I'm going to do is just turn up the sensitivity. I have it on 22. I sometimes change it. It depends um, if there's chatter. You can hear the threshold there. I always have a threshold in the background, which hopefully I can show you in a sec. But 22 sensitivity is my average sensitivity, and I always have it on all metal horseshoe, which is obviously that in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, if we just go to the first set, and I always have the volume. Let me just turn down the sensitivity set. Just gonna turn that right down so it doesn't chatter. Right, so just remember I've on 22. <laughs> right, volume 25, that is full. I like to hear everything loud and clear. Some people might um, be too sensitive to having full volume, but that's what I like to have on mine. Uh, I always search in all terrain general. Um, it's just something I never need to change. Um, I'm used to it. It works. It's straight out of the box. <laughs> so, you know, it's it's what I like. Uh, noise cancel. I always noise cancel. So, um, obviously, just press that button there. And that'll just select um, a station. If there's still noise in the background, you can always alter it by um, just... Come on, go, yeah, going down or up. That was on minus nine, which was maximum. But you can always manually adjust it once you've noise cancelled if it's not quite right. Ground balance zero every time. Um, unless I get really aerated soil on the arable, um, I'm on zero ground balance. Recovery speed, I hardly ever change it from six. Got to be honest with you, six is a happy medium for me. Um, it's really good recovery speed, but it doesn't miss a lot and it gets deep enough. Um, I don't think I'm I'm losing any depth at, at that, to be honest with you. Discrimination pattern. So we've got all metal. Um, what else have we got on here? Yeah, I just keep it on all metal, um, basically. Uh, what else? I haven't been through the settings like this. Uh, ferrous limits. Yeah, I just keep it on a preset, seven... 7.3 preset. Now I did I did play with these and I did set some customs when I first got the machine, but I would recommend just using the preset um, 7.3 um, and that works perfectly well um, once you've got a trained ear. You've just got to be careful of the nails. The nails I'm trying to, trying to squeak you so that you um, dig them, but um, I'm used to that now and uh, uh, the preset is plenty good enough and, and I hardly dig any junk. Uh, ferrous tones, what's that? Yeah, so I just have it on ferrous volume. That was what it was on, wasn't it? Yeah, ferrous volume, let's just go into that. Yeah, ferrous volume eight. So I've got fer ferrous volume eight and then I've got ferrous pitch. One. Stabilizer's normally off. And the filter is off. So stabilizer zero, stabilizer filter off. Um, if you're new to the machine, you can actually play around with the stabilizer. Um, perhaps have it on halfway. Just until you get used to like the nails and things like that so you don't dig them. And that's that. And then you've got target tones. I always, always have it on five regional um, all tones. Five regional all tones all the time. Is there any other things on that one? No. Audio theme normal. Multi frequency all the time. I never ever come out of multi frequency. I think that's it. I think that's it for settings. Um, yeah, yeah, pretty simple. Um, but those settings go with those tones. So if you did change the settings, if you didn't use my settings, the tones might be slightly different, but hopefully you've gained something out of the video. 
Um, give us a thumbs up and a like and a subscribe if you can and watch the uh, videos out in the field that I've already done. Um, I'm doing really well on the channel at the moment, finding some nice stuff, getting some good following. So uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you. Bye for now.